Good morning, St. Andrews. How are you today? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? I certainly have been getting a lot of rain. At the end of monsoon season, they kept doing the countdown, and I said, yay. Um, so we have some different uh, liturgy today, only that it's the right liturgy from our prayer book. So you all need to make sure you have your prayer books or in your pews. There was two handouts for music that you should have. Uh, one are the service music, the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei, and the other is the psalm that the um, choir is going to be singing and that we will be singing the antiphon, and Jeffrey's going to take us through those, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead.
first section wants it to do it. Okay. Uh, you'll, notice, you'll notice if you read music that the first set of words for Dios, uh, are repeated. So we sing that whole section twice. The choir's just going to say it once for you, so you will find that. <laughs> Aren't those beautiful? That will be really nice for us to be able to have them included in our service. So today you're going to be using your prayer book and you can use either the English or the Spanish prayer books. They're both in the pews. I will, as usual, be going back and forth uh, from English to Spanish as we have in the past um, so that we have a bilingual service. Um, so just follow along. I'll announce pages as we go until we kind of get used to using the prayer book again. Now, the little hiccup is that we are going to do that this week, and next week we are celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. So we won't be using the prayer book. <laughs> but we will be using the prayer book the following week. Then we'll have another hiccup <laughs> because we have the guest, uh, Shaniqua, Broken Leg will be with us. We'll be celebrating the Indigenous Peoples Eucharist again on that day. And then we will be celebrating uh, Dia de los Muertos on the last Sunday of this month. So it's a bit of a mix this month, right? A back and forth kind of thing. But I think all of it will be uh, really something that we can enjoy. Um, I wanted to just also share with you all, some of you were here yesterday when we did the blessing of the animals. It was so wonderful. We had a lot of fun. And there were quite a few people from the community uh, that came, which was a real blessing also because we've been trying to open ourselves up so that we are uh, engaging more and more with the Armory Park neighborhood. They're already very engaged with Neighbors Feeding Neighbors as volunteers but to actually have them doing some other things with us is really very nice. Um, we passed out, and there are flyers in the back for the announcement of the community um, ofrenda for Dia de los Muertos that will be in the vestibule that is gated, the entry gate uh, to the parish hall, that gated area, so that we can have it open during the day when um, Neighbors Feeding Neighbors is in the kitchen, Monday through Thursday, and then locked up in the rest of the time so that we can make sure that it also stays safe. 
Um, somebody said yesterday, what are we bringing? We were talking about pictures, and I said, yes, and I don't think we need to say it, but I guess we should say it out loud. If it's your only precious picture of your grandma, don't bring the original. <laughs> Make a copy, and let's put it in the, on the ofrenda, not one that if something were to happen, you will have lost it completely. Um, so just be prepared for that. But we'll talk more about uh, creating the ofrenda in the next couple of weeks and have an opportunity for us to also um, make some paper flowers and to get things ready to, to start building the ofrenda. Sound good? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, today is our first Sunday with coffee hour again officially, um, and you'll notice that when, when we had our all-parish meeting a couple of weeks ago, we made a decision that we would have coffee hour on the first Sunday of every month, and in order to be setting up for coffee hour, we need volunteers. So you have to put your name on the calendar if you're going to be the volunteer to cover coffee hour that day. That's how we'll know who's doing it and being able to organize around it. Um, we also want to make sure that there are folks staying afterwards to help clean up and put things away. Um, so just be aware of that. If we're having coffee hour, we need to put things back together again. The second Sunday of the month generally is going to be our Primavera sandwich making day. Now there are several teams uh, already doing the Primavera sandwiches. Uh, they will continue doing it through October, November, and December, but we're going to start doing it with them. So we will do it right after church, during the coffee hour time, and set up sort of a, an assembly line for making sandwiches so that we can all participate in that ministry as we transition it to be under the food ministry that will then be coordinated through Neighbors Feeding Neighbors and the, and the food ministry. Make sense? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I have. Tim, did you have something that you wanted to share? Oh, oh well, we do have one thing that we want to share. Uh, we have new residents living in the vicarage as of yesterday. You can all clap. I'm sad they're not here because I asked them to come so that we could introduce them. You will see them around. They are going to be serving as our sexton, cleaning inside and out, uh, keeping the grounds, uh, cleaning the church, cleaning um, the parish hall and the kitchen, all those things. They're also going to, uh, it's a three generation family living in the home. The daughter is gonna be acting as our office support person. So she's gonna be working in the office. It's gonna take us some time to get sort of in that line, so just be a little patient. Um, and they've already been instructed that you all can't tell them or ask them to do anything. It only comes from me. So if you try that, they're gonna say, did you check with Reverend Debbie? So let's let them get acclimated, right? It's gonna take a little bit of time to get them sort of on board. There's a little uh, young man in the family and he'll be going to the school up here, so it's really close for them. They'll be uh, coming in and out, and you'll see them quite a bit. Um, but just also remember that that gate that leads over to the vicarage is their home, okay? I don't think we need to say that out loud, but let's say it out loud. Yes, Jane. So it's Paula and George and Mariela Yucapicio, and I think the little boy's name is Aliazar, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's a take on a name that's not quite exactly what I think it is. Anyway, but we'll, we'll get to know them a little bit better. So welcome them when you do see them, say hello. Yeah? Cool. All right. Um, Tim, we're not going to be doing prayers of transition and, and land acknowledgments this Sunday, but we will resume them when we do the um, Indigenous Peoples Day and then when we get back into a mode um, again, um, probably in November, okay? Sound good? All right, um, the hymns are on the board. We are starting the service on page 355. If you're in the English prayer book, if you're in the Spanish prayer book, it's page 277.
And now let's prepare to meet our God.
Dios omnipotente, para quien todos los corazones están manifestos, todos los deseos conocidos, y ningún secreto se haya y cubierto. Purifica los pensamientos de nuestros corazones por la inspiración de tu Santo Espíritu, para que perfectamente te amemos y digamente proclamamos la grandeza de su santo nombre, por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear us than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and the meditation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. From Lamentations. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations, she that was a princess among the provinces, has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters, her enemies prosper, 
because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God.
morning is from Paul's letter to Tim Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy, holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the, the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, and an apostle, and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living within us. Hear what the gospel is saying to his people.
Santo Evangelio de Nuestro Señor Jesucristo, según San Lucas. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, <laughs> and it would obey you. <clears throat> who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. El Evangelio de Nuestro Señor. Praise to you, to see faces looking up here and not up there. <laughs> I cannot tell you, it's like a whole changed environment here. All right. So, so often in the news, a man or a woman that is interviewed after a heroic act, like you know, driving into a frozen river or something to save a child, or jumping into the tracks to save somebody who's fallen in front of the subway platform. They insist, I'm not a hero. I don't even think about it. I just do what is needed to do in that moment. And so say the worthless slaves in the parable. We have done only what we ought to have done. But don't underestimate the enormity, the intensity, the far-reaching influence of the simple, prepared, in little things, faithfulness. Heroic achievements lie dormant in a tiny seed of faith. The immense oak with thick and sturdy branches you can walk along, balancing yourself high above the ground, was once an acorn. A gorgeous orchid emerged from an invisible seed weighing less than a microgram. A well-rooted mesquite tree or ironwood tree begins with a teeny tiny bean, a flower turned to seed. And yet they become the most majestic canopies of shade in a sun-drenched desert. The word faith, pistis in Greek, is often spoken about as if it is meant trying to talk ourselves into an intellectual assent to something with increasing our faith, meaning that we are successfully persuading ourselves that we have adopted an idea we think may be a bit ridiculous. That's not faith. It's self-deception, and usually a pretty unsuccessful kind of self-deception that results in our feeling a little guilty, maybe a little hypocritical, as we know that we don't actually believe what we say. 
it is in fact those who might be labeled unchurched, are really those folks who cannot find a way to hold what they believe so deeply, faithfully, against what they see as the church. That's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Faith is not an intellectual projection or assessment. It's not an intellectual analog to that process that we go through to build or maintain some kind of hubris. Faith is a relationship. It's a relationship of trust. It's a relationship of allegiance. It's about a relationship of love, welcome, and inclusivity. When Jesus talks about faith, he's not talking about what you do in your head. He's talking about what you do with your hands and your feet, your wallet and your privilege, your power and your time. Faith in Jesus is not shown by saying or thinking things about him. Faith in Jesus is about following Jesus' teachings. Faith isn't the substance that you can measure or count. It's not something that you can add to, subtract from, or even in any way quantify. Little wonder, then, that when, we deci- when the disciples ask for more faith, <laughs> Jesus quickly grows frustrated By this point in the narrative, the disciples have spent so much time with Jesus and have witnessed witnessed his ministry and miracles, have listened to his teachings and preachings, and are currently journeying with him to Jerusalem, where he has told them that he will meet his certain fate. Yet they still don't perceive faith, or that it is about trust. Faith, that is, that is highly relational. When you live in a fully trusting relationship with God, all things are possible. And when you live in a fully trusting relationship with God and respond to God intellectually, you might be left a little bit disappointed. But when you respond to God instinctively, seeking neither reward or praise, but simply desiring to be faithful, we are at our very best. So what are some of the examples of faith here at St. Andrews? What are they? It's not a rhetorical question. (laughs) Yes. Feeding our neighbors is a big one. What else? Primavera. What's another one? The choir. What else? Altar Guild. Come on. Making space for children. Blessing the animals. Welcome and hospitality. Studying EFM, enriching our belief and our faith. Opening the patio for coffee to our, and conversations to people in the neighborhood. Building the ofrenda. Celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. Anti-racism training. Safe church and safe community training. These are all acts of faith. Right? Increase our faith, the disciples say. Indeed comes from fretting and not trusting in God, as we heard sung in Psalm 37. It's the appeal that is born out of anxiety. It's the wish that gives witness to our uncertainties. It's the petition that points to our discomfort and perplexities. It gives voice to those times in our lives when we just need Jesus to make things easier or when we think that we are demanding some answers. It gives voice to our tendencies towards self-indulgence and our desire for the quickest way to get to an end, just to get it done. It gives voice to when we just want to get 
what needs to be done, done. And haven't we all been guilty of that, right? It gives voice to the moments when we are tired of thinking and we want somebody to assure us instead. It gives voice to wanting quick solutions instead of making an effort for the necessary to discover and to learn and to grow together. It gives voice to our ultimate idolatry when it comes to God, an idolatry of certainty. But what is truly at the heart of such a request, that we get more faith like the disciples wanted? What do we imagine more faith will get us? What do we think when we say we need more faith? What will change in your life? Again, not a rhetorical question. <laughs> Pardon me? For fear to be lessened, right? To minister to others, right? We want life to be easier, don't we? We're all guilty of that. We all want less pain in our lives. That makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't seem like too much to ask. We want the answers to be easy, effortless. We don't want to have to struggle for them and figure out what needs to happen. That's the rub of this question, where it only is about requesting, for, were it only about requesting faith, that would be one thing. But it's complicated. Clearly having faith is better than not having it, but the rub is how much. And how do we measure it? Our lives, our culture, our society depend on and feed off quantifiers. Usually more is better, isn't it? And perhaps the fact that faith is not quantifiable is one of the most difficult things to accept about faith. But maybe hidden in that immeasurable is the promise of the gospel. And maybe the mixed response of Jesus points to the very truth, that faith in God were something like God's love for us, immeasurable, inestimable, incalculable. God does not measure our faith any more than God can, than we can measure God's love for us. So imagine your faith, that teeny tiny seed. Just take a moment and close your eyes and think about your faith being that teeny tiny seed. And then think about what it has grown into. And the canopy of love and care, welcome and inclusion that you have known because of that tiny seed. Last week while I was gone, I spent a week with retired or soon to be retired clergy. They were asking themselves a lot of questions that maybe we even ask ourselves. And you know, each time I go away to teach at Credo, I learn something new. The faculty almost always will say, we may have participants doing Credo, but we're doing it too. Some of the questions they were asking about was what now? Who am I if I'm not a priest or a deacon on any given day? And I was a reminded and I reminded them of something that I learned rather a hard way not very long ago. I learned that my vocation is not my identity. I'll say that again. My vocation is not my identity. I am who I am, and I am who God made me to be. And being faithful to that creation means that I live as, as authentically and with as much integrity as I can.
Long ago, I remember a sermon about identity. In that sermon, I was graced by a nugget of wisdom that I'll share with you today because it always comes to mind. Isn't it one of those things that we hear that little nugget of wisdom that lives with us over and over and over again? You cannot know whose you are until you know who you are. You cannot know whose you are until you know who you are. As we discern God's intent for us, we have no choice to acknowledge that God desires that we live our lives and our very best selves. By living our best selves, we are faithful. Faithful to the one who made us, faithful to the gifts that we've been given, and then faithful to the whole human family. And more word, one more word of promise. The note that the petition is, increase our faith, not increase my faith. Did you hear that in the gospel? It didn't say increase my faith. The petition was to increase our faith. The power of the community of the faithful around us is just as unquantifiable as faith itself. We do none of this alone. And we are most certainly better together than we will ever be on our own. This is especially evident here at St. Andrews. We're reviving our efforts to be that community of faith who we've always known ourselves to be, to share ministry, so that we're sharing our gifts to see God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Even us introverts will tell you, if we're being honest, that when we share our gifts in common community with a common goal, there's no better way to experience God in each other. Together we're kept from isolating gifts. Did you hear that? That means that not one of us should have the privilege or the power of being the only one to know something that would be best known by everyone. And maybe more importantly, we fall out away from that idea that we don't need anyone else. Or even maybe the possibility that we do that because it makes us feel important. Together, we celebrate pooling our resources and seeing the miracles that come from giving, from sharing, and from relating. Increase our faith, the disciples said. You already have faith. You already have all the faith you need. Simply use your faith and be faithful. The miracle lies in the inherent ordinariness of our faith. Amen. the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. 
for us and for your salvation. For take he was crucified and He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he is seated at the red and at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. All who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the church. Oh dear. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And for all the people that were brave enough to come today. <laughs> That's a piece of faith. We exalt you, O God, our King. Is your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, found on page 359. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dios omnipotente, ten en 
misericordia de ustedes, perdone todos los pecados por Jesucristo nuestro Señor, les fortaleza en todo bondad y por el poder del Espíritu Santo, les conserve en la vida eterna. Amén. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? No birthdays or anniversary. Do you have a birthday? It's not today. When is it? I'm going to be 80 on the 6th. Oh boy, we have a birthday coming up. All right. Oh, Creator God, we are so grateful for life and for blessings. We thank you for Jane, for all that she is and all that you have made her to be. We ask you to bless her with another year and many, many, many years of joy and happiness. Go before her, behind her, above her, below her, and surround her, protect her, and keep her. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. All right, my siblings in Christ, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. And now let us offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good our vows to the Most High.
The service continues on page 361 or in page 284 if you're in the Spanish hymnal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and our ancestors and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Padre santo y bondadoso, en tu amor infinito nos hiciste para ti y cuando caemos en pecado, en que quedamos esclavados en mal y la muerte, tú en tu misericordia enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo eterno, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como un de nosotros, Y así reconocemos contigo, el Dios y el Padre de todos. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and he offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over for suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ is is risen. (laughs) Christ will come again. Padre, en este sacrificio de alabanza y acción, de gracia, celebramos en el memorial de nuestra rendición. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the blood and the body of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may be faithfully, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints, with our ancestors, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Todo esto te pedimos por tu Hijo Jesucristo. Por él y con él y en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, tuyo son el honor y la gloria, Padre Omnipotente, ahora y por siempre. Amén. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the and deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, ahora and for siempre. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
We're on page 365 or 288 if you're in the Spanish prayer book. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Vaya con Dios. It's your dear.